San Bernardino issue, I'm still not sure where it stands in terms of a false flag. Number one, it's very rare to have a standing shooting operation in an in a uh, uh, office where you have basically disabled individuals. That and by the way, seven. it is incredible. They were having a live shooting drill. They, this is ABC yeah. News. They were having a shooting drill now when this reportedly happened. Not only that, they've been having a shooting drill in the center of, of where disabled uh, veterans and others were living and having it on a monthly basis. So that really was, number one, an S-1 flag. Number two, you had a woman who supposedly was in Pakistan, went to Saudi Arabia, was less, less than 100 pounds, being able to uh, wear a vest, at the same time carry guns, and at the same time shoot and Twitter, absolutely impossible. And at the same time, we had a... So why would they uh, allow a jihad false flag? And, and, and to be clear... Because there's one issue that you have brought out repeatedly and correctly, and that was the Sandy Hook issue transposes everything we have here, and that is gun control for Obama. His last wish and dying wish may well be dying wish is that we have a gun control in the United States. That is not going to happen. And at the same time, he has really uh, committed criminal acts against the United States with the help, once again, of our CIA, our intelligence community, and other uh, elements of our government. Well, let me expand on that. And, and, and I, I've sent Joe Biggs to a bunch of these. He never thinks they're a false flag. He's a combat vet, smart guy. He says because of the drill at the same time, he says because of the tweeting while the killing's going on. He says because of the drill at the exact same time and other things. He bare minimum thinks that they had warned people locally they were ready. Uh, not that they were involved, but that higher-ups opened the door to make sure it went ahead and happened. They gave them the passport. They gave them, they let her back in with a you know fake address and fake info. So bare minimum, they were being protected. So that is a stage one, uh, you, you know, partial false flag, well, bare minimum. Uh, but, but, and if I can say anything to your audience, we do not have one year left to live out this administration. Stop it right there. Not... Uh, Steve, I want you to I skip this break. It's so important. I want you to flesh out, because a lot of people say, and Trump said, well, you know, it'll make him a martyr politically if we go after him. He's in so much trouble. You know, I don't know if we have time in the next year, but my concern is the way Obama's acting, the way his people are acting, the way they're getting really nasty and, and really making more and more stuff up, they're acting like they're getting ready to move against the American people. And, and so if you agree with that, I'd like to know what you think we should be watching out for, what they might pull. Well, what I agree with is that he is out of control and he's never, he's not, he's fronting for an organization that's consisting of the Pritzkers, the Chicago Rami Emanuel, who, by the way, was being prosecuted for incompetency, lying, and distortion, even by the New York Times. And what we had it was a distraction in San Bernardino from his good friend and buddy from childhood, Rami Emanuel and the Chicago mob. And that's part of what San Bernardino was about, was to take away the attention when the New York Times asked for the resignation of Rami Emanuel and the entire government of Chicago. So what we expect to have is more denial, more crime, and more distortions of the truth. What we need to do is to initiate a referendum where we will ask the president to step down. I do not want an assassination. What I want is a, a referendum where the people say we can no longer wait for a year. We do not want anyone else, and we will want to nominate, by choice, Trump. And either we have the elections now or we don't have the elections. We do not have one more year. And all this nonsense that's going on where ISIS is supposedly creating terrorist attacks all over the world, which they're not, quite frankly. If they're, they're, you've got to remember the two leaders of ISIS. The, the soul and the military arm were both in our prisons in Baghdad for over eight months. And if anybody in your audience believes that we in the military and the intelligence community didn't double up these guys, and ISIS should know this, and every Sunni... They would have never Muhammad been released. Muslims. They would have been given acid baths if they of weren't course. double agents. They are double agents for us. So anybody who follows these fools knows that they're following CIA and military intelligence operatives who've been doubled by us easily, and then we create the false flags, the, the false
false enemies, which basically we claim are Muslims. The Muslims are not our enemies. They are the enemies, perhaps, of Israel, who has a problem with their survival, but we are not... Well, I'll say this. Obviously, natural. Wahhabis being brought in is meant for there to be attacks, so the government's yes. bringing them in. They are, at the top of the food chain, guilty. Now, let me be very frank. In my business, and they know this from my past experiences, it's easy for me to take out the Wahhabis and the Salafis in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. That's the easiest work I can do. But fortunately, they're not letting me or others do that kind of work because they're easy to neutralize the way they were neutralized in other countries and other worlds, which I was involved with. But unfortunately, our government is involved in creating these episodes, like Bush Sr. was involved in allowing Noriega to start agitation propaganda. Why? Because he wanted an excuse to send in the 82nd Well, well absolutely, but he, here's my question. I think they've misjudged the calculus to be able to bring in radical jihadis, have them attack us, and then take our guns and restrict internet free speech as Hillary's trying to do. I see how they brought them in to let them do it. I get it's a false flag ultimately because they brought them in. I, I just don't the see how they is, think they'll get away with that. Well, let me put this one. I, I really have to look back at San Bernardino and you look at Como, uh, Como the interviewer in the newspaper and in the, in the, in CB, on uh, CBS or ABC where he asked the lawyer, uh, you know, there are many holes in this story. Number one, both the husband and wife were handcuffed. Number two, they were able to Twitter while they were shooting. Number three, you know, you have a high military operation where even if you were a black widow, you couldn't be trained in this, particularly if you're 90 pounds. And the other, general, and the other man had no idea of how to deal with military capacity. But there was a third man who nobody talked about. My point to you is this is consistent with Sandy Hook. Once you have lied, once you have contrived false scenarios, just go all the way. Continuously be a liar, and you will continuously be. Well, there is some the evidence that, that the husband and wife were decoys, and there were other shooters, and that's usually how you do exactly. it. Exactly, that's exactly sure. What I must have. But the issue isn't this. The issue is much greater. Do we? Can we continue with a criminal like Obama?